good morning. It's a uh, bright, shiny, and cold morning here in Northern Ontario. My name is Dave, and this is Makiro Sai, my N scale railroad. Today, we're going to look at the different ways you can make a road. Now, there's lots of lots of different different web uh, websites and, uh, and YouTube videos on this, but I don't think any one of them has ever put all of the different types of ways you can make a road, and that's just some. But I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different ways to make a road. Uh, some are quick and dirty. Uh, some require uh, a little bit of work. And uh, uh, some are like specifics, like I will go through them right now. So what I've done here is on this one, maybe if I pull away, the, if I pull that away, you'll be able to see it. Okay, there we go. There. See that. So what this is, is... insulation tape that you put around your doors and your windows uh, and it's stuck down to the phone and uh, in between the phone I have put uh, let me give you the angle side of that drywall compound that I bought at my local home hardware store Next to that, I have tongue depressors down and plaster between those. Now the reason for that is that if you're looking for scale, then this foam tape is way thicker than a, a paved road would be in uh, end scale if you took a ruler to it and measured it. Uh, it just wouldn't be right. So I use the tongue depressors and they're, they're about, about one millimeter thick and uh, just used hot glue and glued them down to the foam. The next one here is just a strip where we're going to paint the the knock asphalt paint. The next one is AK asphalt. The next one is something I got from Britain. I was looking around for roads, didn't know what to do, didn't know what to uh, what to do. I thought maybe the easiest way is just to find somebody who makes a road surface, and you can uh, go ahead and uh, put it down. So this is. Uh, let me see. I'll turn it. Uh, I'll turn it like that, and yeah, then we'll shoot that. And this is uh, Tarback, because that's what uh, asphalt's called in England. And it's made by Metcalf, and you can order it online. And this, uh, this one is for O, H, O, and N scale. Uh, and it's uh, slick as can be. Uh, I'll show you that a little later on. The next one is my cork that I like to use. And we're going to use... Uh, Some PVA glue, glue all your, your standard Elmers, and then we're going to use some grout on top of that. The last one here is 1500 grit sandpaper, and uh, this is a, I don't know, they, they call this waterproof sandpaper, so this is wet dry. And so it comes in this neat little sort of gunmetal gray color. Uh, and so we're going to try that as well. So like I said, some are dirt, dirt simple to use and others, others take a lot of work. So we're going to go down here now and start at the end and work our way forward. Work our way forward along all of these. So the first thing I'm going to do here is try pulling away this tape. Oh, it comes off the foot really nicely. Now this has got some cracks in it. Uh, I'm not sure how sure these cracks would be what they would be in end scale, but uh, I'll just pick up. Pick, I don't know, of course, I have a white truck and a white car here. Uh, anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to paint this with some uh, 
Viejo uh, paints. So I've got a palette here. And I'm just going to take, now this is gunmetal, so we'll try gunmetal on one and uh, black on the other. So I'm going to just put a couple of, oops. Wouldn't you know it? It needs to be stirred. So I got one of these fancy little stirring machines where you put the bottle on it, press it in, and it vibrates the crap out of the thing. The only problem with mine is it tends to wander all over the table as you're doing it, so the vibrations go right through the table. So let's see if we got a bit better mix this time. Okay, let's see. I think that's that's a better mix. All right. So I got a. So all I'm going to do is, oh, now, that's not what I wanted. We don't want a silvery robe, do we? That's, that's, uh, gunmetal is, is like a silver. So, what are we going to do here? Well, you know what? I'm going to take the knock, and we're going to try the knock on top of the plaster. And I need... Stir from down here somewhere. Okay, hang on. We'll, we'll, we'll use those. We'll use those. So I'm going to pour out some of the knock. Uh, and I'm going to give this a shake before we do it because it looks like it's separated. See what this looks like. I'm just gonna pour it out. Now it's a definitely more gray color. I didn't realize the gunmetal was gonna be that that silver color. I'll put that back there. So here we go. So now one thing I do know is that the plaster is gonna suck up this paint really well. So here I am just so just of course uh, where it's going over top of the uh, the gunmetal is doing a different color all together. So we've got that that one painted at the end. I'll hold these up at the end so you can see all of them. So that's the knock stuff. Now we'll try the asphalt from uh, ammo. AK and it it's a very thick paste. Wow is it ever a thick paste. Man I didn't realize it was that thick. I had to shook it up before way before we started. But I think I might have made made a dent in this enough that we can so let's just uh we'll just Maybe it's meant to go on as a paste. It might, might, might be meant to go on as a paste. Of course, as usual, I haven't read the instructions, so we'll just keep going here. I'm going to put that there like that. And I'm going to take the brush. Snap off the. Uh... It's a nice thing about uh... nice thing about uh, hot glue. It bonds well enough to the foam, but not so much that you can't can't get it off when you need to. All right, so. Well, I've got the asphalt from the uh, from the AK already in the brush. I'm going to come and do it just right on the foam, so you can see uh, 
Now it looks like some of these might take a couple of coats. Let me just, I've got a feeling this stuff is supposed to be troweled on and not, uh, not put on with a paintbrush. Because it is super, super thick. here. And have a bit of a texture to it. We'll just put the lid back on before I spill it all over the place. And now we'll go back to the dock. And of course I pulled my tape up over my edge here. I'll put more tape, tape down. is definitely more gray than it is uh, black. So again we'll just yeah, messy stuff. Jeez. this brush over here like that and it's not going to dry out the whole time it takes to do the next now the next one is the Metcalf product and the Metcalf product comes in shapes 200 millimeters by 280 millimeters so it's sort of like eight and a half by eleven for us who don't live with the countries for you for those of you who live in countries that don't use metric and it is just a card stock printed on one side not in the other I'll see if I can get a, a shot with the second camera here and you see it has a sort of a speckly grain to it it's actually quite nice um, of course with all these products like this one of the things I find that's difficult is that you're always going to have these sharp edges between the different areas that you make up and that's that might show so I don't know if you uh, uh, okay, I was just looking down for my hair dryer so I could dry this stuff later so anyway on the uh, on this board I don't know if you can see that well maybe you can there it is you can see that I've got a yellow line up running down the middle and two white lines here just drawn right on there and I guess I bought these pens these these are paint pens and they work fantastic they're about the right width for uh, for a uh, in scale road I mean if you've got somebody walking around your railroad measuring the, the thickness of your lines and your highway you might as well throw them out of the house because they're not uh, they're not there to help you so what I've got here is this two vehicles just so you can see this is a vehicle from uh, showcase miniatures and it is a um, maintenance of weight vehicle for the railroad I've, I've used all of the uh, uh, here on central trucks are white uh, with just an orange logo on the uh, on the door and then I've got a little car Maybe I can pick this camera up and see, give you a better shot. So you can see that they fit pretty nicely on there. And uh, so 
the scale for the roads, the width of a road is uh, 12, 12 feet, uh, 3 meters, two, 2 lanes, 3 meters wide, in, at least in Canada. And that's what this is. And I just want to show you something I made to cut things like this. So, this is a rotary cutter. Crafters use it. I use it because it's the best thing for cutting cork. Doesn't, cork doesn't cut well with a knife unless the knife is super, super sharp. And even then it rips the edges when you're cutting it. But this thing is perfect for cutting cork. Now, what I did was, I took, I bought two of them. There's two of them here. And I've got a block of wood in between them. So the distance between here and here, let me show you a better, better look at that. Between here and here is exactly, Twenty six feet. So again, twelve and twelve. Here's your twenty-four, and about a foot for for a white line on both sides. So twenty-six. So all I have to do with this is just run it down the cork. I just hold on. I'm going to put the, cover, the safety covers on so it doesn't cut this cork. There we go. So you just run it down the cork, and it cuts a perfect twenty-six. Uh, foot lane of, of road. So the next thing we're going to do is this one, the cork. Now with this one, we're going to use grout, so it's going to get a little messy. So first things first. Now to be, uh, I should I should say that I, co I coated both the paint directly on foam. I coated the the foam with Mod Podge and water first to seal it a bit, so the the paint would go super into the. So here we go. We got going to take the old school glue. There we go. And I've got a oh there it is. Got a scraper here. thing about the med cap and the foam, and maybe even the, I wouldn't know, wouldn't say so much for the sample because the sample is really, really thin, but the, the cork and the, and the med cap, they leave you about a millimeter. So you can, you can gravel the, uh, the edges of your road with, um, with some, some grit so that you have that nice graveled edge and then you have the, the, the asphalt. So what I'm going to do here is I've got my grout container. This is going to be messy. Grout always is. I was watching, I, I subscribed to a, a channel, uh, the guy's name, the channel's name is Boomer, I think. And he, he uses, um, uses balsa wood, and then seals it with verite, and then puts on uh, what's, uh, a golden, it's called golden fine pumice glaze, I think. And uh, okay, so now we have that road done. And then lastly, we have right down here. Let me see if I can slide this a bit this way. There we go. We have the sand paper. So what we're going to try and do here is, is demonstrate these, these pens. Now, 
you got to rattle these things for a couple of minutes and then you got to find a surface and you poke and if you get paint you're ready to go so this is kind of neat because it makes it it makes it easier I know you can buy all sorts of products that with little tape and, and, and stuff but why do that when, when you can buy a, a, a four dollar paint marker and uh, and just uh, so all I'm going to do is right down the middle here uh, you probably <laughs> I don't know that you can see it hold on there we go, there we go and I just knocked the car the vehicles off there so Gotta hit it, get the lights to hit it right, just right so you see it. There is a there is a yellow a yellow line straight up, straight down the middle. And then for the sides, now I bought a whole set of these. I didn't have to, but uh, the next time around, I will probably just buy three orange and three white, and. Uh, instead of buying a multicolored set although the other reason I bought it was I've got lots of plastic bottles that I put fluids in and they're all clear and I've yet to find a marker that sticks on them properly so this these paints do a good job so let's do that stamp that closed make sure it stays dry and there, you can see the white lights better. Let's see if I can do that. Does that make it any better? Oh, that makes it better. Right, right there, you can see it. Right. So, when you're doing the, the lines and stuff, of course you've got to think about the, uh, the different markings that are on the highway. So, this one, which is sandpaper, you can see they've got dashed lines, and then I, if I turn it around, you'll be able to see that I've got a double, double solid all the way there. So you might want to do your research and find out what the size of those dashed lines are. I didn't, I haven't done it yet. But when I finally do come to making fancy roads, I'll, I'll, I'll make sure that mine are as close to the, the size, and I'll probably make a jig to make it uh, easy to do. So I'm going to just pull the tape off here. I'm not very happy with the knock product right now, and I think it may be my mixing and not the uh, not the product itself. I would imagine it's my mixing and not the product itself. Well, how dirty do I want to make this place? Okay, I got a bucket here that's empty. <laughs> I'm just going to take the bucket, hold it up here, and tap off the extra ground. There we go. So, let's switch back to the other camera. Move that light out of the way. So here we are. Sandpaper glued down with hot glue. You could, I'm sure you could just use PVA. I just, I was, I wasn't going to wait around for the PVA to set. Grout, and looking at it, it'll be great for dirt roads and stuff, but it's not going to do for highways. Not at all. It's way too rough. Leaning towards the Medcap product, and we'll see how that goes. The AK Asphalt is extremely black, which isn't tip prototypical at all. Uh, so I, I'm not sure I would use it. I only bought one bottle, which, thank God, uh, because uh, it's just not going to work, I don't think. Now, I'm going to have to come back, and unfortunately, I must have thrown out the English instructions that go with the knock stuff because it's got German on the uh, on the label and I unfortunately do not read German. Uh, not even a few words of German do I understand. 
So that's, uh, I think I'm going to have to uh, sort of empty that, stir it up, see if I can get it better. For the plasters, the plaster with the uh, AK, oh, the AK has grit in it. I'm just finding that out right now. Uh, again, I don't like it. It's too dark. I, uh, I've never seen a, uh, even even freshly laid uh, asphalt when they're doing it brand new. is is not as black as this. It's 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 a bluey black rather than a, a, a pure black. And again, the uh, the AK or the uh, knock on top of the uh, the plaster with the tape is. I mean, if I can get it to work properly, I might use it. Now, one of the things that, with this one, with the the, the, the with the thick tape, where did I put that tape? Oh, here it is. Woodland Scenic sells a kit. Essentially, this is what's in the kit. Foam tape and hydrogel. Uh, and I don't see... I really can't see the difference between this tape from my, my hardware store and that bucket of, of uh, drywall mud being that much different from what their product is. So I'm not, I'm not bashing them, I'm just saying if you're, go, if you're doing this on the cheap like I am, then hunt around for ways to do it on the cheap. Uh, now for me the reason that this is on the cheap is because ordering that stuff online it weighs so much that shipping sometimes costs as much as half or, or three quarters of what the what the product costs. So buying it local makes more sense to me. So anyway that's it for today. Uh, I am going to monkey around with this and uh, see what I can do to make it uh, look a little better and uh, probably uh, give you a short uh, look at it again uh, maybe at the beginning of the next video so next week uh, my plan is to go back to being in the quarry and uh, and working I've got uh, I bought uh, some beautiful thin thin sheet birch and I want to uh, put concrete beside uh, some of the tracks where the buildings are so that it's uh, it looks more realistic it looks like the, the the tracks are buried excuse me buried in the pavement so and I bought a I bought a 10 pack or I think of this stuff and it's it's not a big sheet so it's perfect for end scale and I have I have a saw that will probably do a reasonably good job cutting it uh, without making a mess so anyway, thank you for watching. Uh, like, comment, subscribe. Uh, if you notice the difference in the lighting today, there are now three more lights in this area. Uh, I bought them because I'm going to mount them in the ceiling and over uh, over the layout, so I can just slide them along a rail and lock them down to take pictures. So anyway, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.